Hi, we're So Awkward. I'm Brooke. And I'm Rachel. And this month we're really excited because this time we are making a memory patchwork skirt. That's right. And how is that going to be our memory patchwork skirt? We are using scrap fabrics from our stashes from previous projects. So every piece of fabric has a memory attached to it and a project that we worked on before. And some of those memories to those pieces are not necessarily from our collection. Correct. We got, uh, someone donated a two bags of um, fabric to us, her scrap fabric, and we wanted to incorporate some of her memories into our skirts too. Yes, and this is how we got them. Two of these. Two giant trash bags. This is half full because we've already gone through yep. it. We've gone through them all and put them in totes so that and we can see And now we them. each have our own stash of scrap fabrics. Yes. Lots of fun knitting Lots of ones fun in here. little scrap fabrics. So, we're not using a pattern. We are going to be improvising this uh, and seeing how well we do. I'm making a wrap tie skirt. And I'm making a gathered skirt with elastic. Yes. So let's see how we do. Are we excited? Yes. And one other thing, Brooke and I are not wearing masks. Oh, yes. <gasps> Yay. We so both got vaccinated. Ooh. Anyway, let's get sewing. So I just wanted to show you my little collection that uh, I started working on. Rachel and I cut fabrics last night because it took us four hours, four or more hours to cut these. And we are making the blocks out of four and a half inch squares. So when sewed down, they will be the four inch squares. So you have to allow for the seam allowance. And we're both doing a bit of a rainbow effect uh, because that's cool. And I have all sorts of colors, including a little bit of section of black and white on the end there. And I um, picked out my few favorites. And this is a piece from a quilt that I made many years ago that it took me like four years to make the quilt and this was one of my favorite pieces from that so i am going to put a little bit of that in there and then this is a random one from the from the fabric freebie that we got with those bags just this random dude so i'm going to put him on the quilt too or sorry the skirt and so what about your collection uh mine is also rainbow and it's about 75 percent mask fabric that i made over the year and my favorite fabric is actually this one that also came from the gifted stash fabric and it is a unicorn that she actually made a bag for me with this fabric and i just wanted to make sure that was in my skirt and then of course this one from our hinterland dress that we made so that that's was right before covid right before covid and so that's a fun memory and then show them how you uh, figured out your Okay, so how I figured out my amount that I needed was I took my measurement and I added some uh, fabric so that it would be gathered, and then I want I measured how long I wanted it as um, divisible by four, and then I took how many squares went into that number, and then I multiplied how many squares, and I came up with 80. <laughs> so the long run is... You've got to stay in math. What's going on? Same. My trusty friend. Same ripper. What happened? Uh, it's just like I sewed it and I wasn't really paying attention. And um, like my block, this pink one wasn't ironed. Lined up correctly. And it didn't line up. And so I was off. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to be off for the whole row. So I have to yeah. start over again on that one. You can put little alligator clips next I to you. I could. We love alligator clips. So we're, um, we're sectioning out like the different colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and then we're just gonna pull from our stacks and start building our rows. And I'd like everybody to say hi to Jack. Hi, Jack. Maybe you should do what? Maybe I should take this opportunity to iron all my fabrics that I'm sewing together today. Cause you didn't iron that much before you cut them, but well, I did. Well, that's how I got through so fast. I know, that's another reason, cause I was ironing more than you. Okay. Now you know my secret. Now I know your secret. But now you're going to have to go over and iron. Yeah, but I can do it all at once now. Yes. Well, you have to plug in the iron because it's not plugged in yet. Dang it. Seam ripper time. I am racking my brain about wrapping my brain Mom. around it. We're not professionals here, ladies and gentlemen. This is not an instructional video. I am wrapping my brain 
racking my brain. I'm racking my brain around, ramping my brain around this chain game that I'm playing. So if I start my row with a yellow, I start with the next color. Is that what I'm doing? Yes. Yes, I start with the next color and make my twosies, and then I can cut my last twosies off to put my first one on the yellow on the green, and that way it goes yellow, green, blue. I think I've finally figured it out. Third time's a charm. Shoot, shoot, shoot. I kind of got carried away. I don't know where I'm at now. I get to use the scene ripper again. Yay. It's that time of the month for a monthly tip. Just a tip. So while sewing patchwork skirts, we have a few tips to share with you. First off, you get yourself a scrap piece of fabric, and this is going to be your start fabric for every time you do the chaining. So you're gonna put it in your machine and you can just, you reuse the same piece over and over again. And you just, you start sewing on this piece. And then when you're ready to put your next piece in, you let it go. It gives something for your foot and your feed dogs to hold on to, but you're not having to ruin like the beginning of your good fabric. So it gives something for your machine to, to grab onto. And then you just keep putting your pieces through. And then you don't have to, you're not stopping and starting every time you're sewing your patch, patchwork together. Then when you get to the end, you find your piece of scrap fabric and you sew back onto it. And then you just do that. So what you're gonna end up with is kind of this flag piece. And you just take your snips and you snip them apart. And then you're gonna be ready to sew your next two pieces together. Song, cause I'm Sam Ripper, Sam Ripper. It's better than the Grim Reaper, Grim Reaper. Which is better than a Tom Peeper, Tom Peeper. Don't forget the beaker, the beaker. Seam Ripper! I am seam ripping again because apparently the first time I seam ripped, I didn't need to seam rip. So now I'm seam ripping again to put it back on where I originally pulled it off of because apparently I, had, I was just, my brain was backwards. So this is where it needs to go, where it originally was when I was singing that lovely song earlier about a seam, seam ripper. So that's a keeper. So you just went deeper. I just went deeper with your seam ripper. My seam ripper. <laughs> because I have to seam rip <laughs> what I just seam ripped. <laughs> what I seam ripped before. Because I was wrong the first time. I was right the second time. And now I'm wrong this time. This yellow needs to go here on the orange. Ooh. I told her to write it down. And then she told me to write it down. <laughs> you write it down. <laughs> I'm seam ripping now because I put you put the yellow I put the yellow on the orange instead of the orange on the yellow. But does it matter? It does because Why? it's directional. <laughs> so so no, this is how it would be orange yellow. Oh, because it's a but directional it's upside piece. Down. <laughs> so if it was a solid, it wouldn't if it matter. If it was solid, it wouldn't matter. I wouldn't have to do this step. Seam ripper, seam ripper. It's better than the grim reaper, grim reaper. Fill up that jar with your bleeper, 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 bleepers. And then I'm gonna sew these strips together and then um, sew the two halves together. So that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, I hope it all lines up. So I have all my rows done and laid out. I had to make a few changes, had a few uh, mistakes. Um, this is gonna be really long. We'll see, I may end up cutting some off, but we'll see. But this is gonna, what it's gonna be pretty cool. And look, crazy guys right there. Crazy guy. I'm sewing my rows together to make my back panel and 
as I go along, I ironed one row one way and the other row the other way so that when you sew them together, they kind of lock and your finger runs over it and they just kind of snug and fit in there. So that way you can get a little bit easier chance of being able to get the seams to line up. Yay! This month's plant of the month is more of a idea and um, something that you can have fun with doing with your plants is propagating your plants. And what does that mean? It means making babies out of your plant. So as you can see here, I have two plants in here in the water soaking and getting ready to make a plant. They've been soaking in water for maybe about a month and they're starting to get the roots. Little baby roots on that one. And once the roots get, oh, just visually established enough, then you can take it out and put it in dirt and it'll be ready to start growing. I have the two plants in here. I have a philodendron and a peperomia. Now let's say I wanted to take this pothos <laughs> and give it a haircut, which I might do soon because this strand here doesn't have a whole lot of leaves on it. So I could sacrifice this strand and cut um, from the end here. I could cut a few leaves back. This leaf is bad. I could cut a few leaves back. Look at all these little, these little nodes here. These are wanting to start to be roots. So if you expose these into water, these are going to start growing into roots. And then you can put that in the dirt and get a new plant and a new vine growing. So you can help fill your plant up to the top and get rid of all of your scraggly pieces, which I don't know, you know, this is quite a piece here. So, so that is, there's all sorts of different types of propagation you can do in water propagation, or you can get a rooting hormone powder and you can stick that on the end and that will help sometimes create those roots for you quicker. So I hope you have fun propagating your plants, share your plants with your friends, because that's what it's all about. We are done! Ta-da! Ta uh, I was able to make mine a tie skirt. I'm going to have to make some adjustments and I'm gonna add some snaps. And then- I have my gathered skirt. It's perfect. Yes. I love this skirt so much because it has so many different moments in it and um, memories from the different projects we've done and memories from projects that I've given to other people. Spe specifically masks, this is about 80% mask fabric. <laughs> yes, and since we are almost done with masks, why not use the fabric for something else? Yes, this is a perfect project for getting rid of scraps. However, we found that when we cut our squares out, it created more smaller scraps. So. We're just gonna have these scraps forever. Until what you said, 80. Until we're about 80 and we can't see anymore. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, with that. How many fat quarters would you give it? <laughs> well, it's not really a pattern, so I don't know. Um, would you make it again? I would make it again now that I know what I'm doing, but I think <laughs> next time I would make it, I think I would do either two or three specific fabrics. Oh, okay. Make it instead a little more of, cohesive. Instead of a rainbow. Yeah, so if I wanted to, yeah. I would make um, And this larger, I would be, I would give it some larger squares. I would do larger squares. I would totally make this again. In fact, this is, I've not made a, I've made a skirt like this, just not patchwork before. It's like we're wearing quilts. Yes, yeah, so if I get cold, we could, I could just open this up and <laughs> show a little leg. Woo! <laughs> so, thanks Any, for joining yeah. us. And uh, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and like us on Facebook and Instagram. And until next time, don't forget to be so, so awkward. awkward.